Hello, I would like to give you an overview of uh, what happened at the, this year's EHA in Vienna um, regarding news um, to the multiple myeloma treatment. So, in my view, I would say uh, we can divide that in a bit into talking about primary diagnosis and um, primary therapy and relapse and um, disease and its treatment. So starting with the uh, primary diagnose, the newly diagnosed myeloma, we uh, saw um, late-breaking abstract um, on the role of high-dose methylene uh, uh, therapy and the autologous stem cell transplantation. Um, it was presented by uh, Paul Richardson and uh, this is a so-called determination trial which was conducted in the United States and patient, uh, patients were randomized. So after RVD induction in one treatment arm, patients received autologous stem cell transplantation and in one treatment arm not, and all patients received consolidation and maintenance. And this trial showed that um, the integration of the high-dose methylene treatment and the autologous stem cell transplantation is a still gold standard and remains gold standard for all eligible patients in frontline, as it led to a significant benefit um, in the progression-free survival, so the time um, to an eventual relapse. And um, what we also saw uh, is that patients uh, could stay very long on the maintenance treatment, the lenalidomide maintenance, maintenance was here given unlimited and it was not stopped after one year, for example, like in the French kind of similar trial. Uh, so um, patients in the median after, uh, after high dose chemotherapy stayed more than 14 months on lenalidomide maintenance. This was the most important abstract um, in regards of frontline treatment. And uh, then there was um, quite a number of abstracts uh, regarding the novel immunotherapeutics and multiple myeloma. And there were two big topics. One were the so-called bispecific T cell engagers of bispecific antibodies. And the other one were for sure the CAR T cells, which were recently approved for treatment of relapsed myeloma in Europe. Bispecifics are so far not approved. However, they are tested in various indications and even in combinations. We have currently six by specifics under evaluation in significant patient numbers. Um, and I would like to highlight uh, that there are data now on by specifics not directed against the main target of the last years, the BCMA, but against other targets. We call that. G protein coupled receptor and the bispecific is called telkitamab. And um, the colleagues could show that uh, this is highly active in treatment of refractory disease, response rates until 70%. They also showed that there's a distinct toxicity, the skin toxicity, which might happen in quite a number of patients. Uh, where we now learned also to establish supportive care. And there were intriguing data showing that you can combine bispecific antibodies, for example, with monoclonal anti-CD38 antibodies. Despite patients had already the monoclonal anti-CD38 antibodies, but that you get the immune system also with this combination even better engaged 
to ultimately enhance responses. And we now see also that they are durable responses beyond one year of treatment. However, we also learned that uh, bispecific antibodies might induce um, a higher sensitivity for infections and also severe infections. So uh, this is one thing we all have to know and to notice so that in case of signs of infection, early antibiotic intervention is crucial. Patients have to go to the doctor or the hospital if they experience signs of infection or fever and the protection against COVID is of un utmost need um, with the vaccines. However, also with the protection measurements and the newly available, wherever it is available, it was shelled for the primary prophylaxis. Regarding CAR T cells, there's still um, many efforts um, to further optimize and improve CAR T cells, that they are continuously getting even more specific, more durable. However, what we also see is that uh, the currently approved CAR T cells, the idacaptogen Ida Viclucel or Idacel, and the siltacaptogen Autolocel or Siltacel, which is approved but currently not available in Europe, show also in the longer follow-up um, very good data. And um, for example, um, uh, the US colleagues could exactly mimic in the real world uh, the data of uh, the trial, which led at the end to approval. So with that, I think um, uh, the spectrum of the viscous EHA is a bit uh, shown. Um, overall, a lot of data, um, confirming data, promising data, and to my view, the next big step for patients especially is the upcoming approval of bispecific antibodies in Europe.